Hello beautiful people, this is 13th of January and today I am going to talk about Wilhelm Karl Werner Otto Fritz Franz Wien or simply known as Wilhelm Wien, famous for the 1911 Nobel Prize. But before I carry on with that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video which I do almost daily. And if you like my work, do hit the like button and if you have something to tell me, make sure you leave it in the comments box below, I will be sure to go through it. And stay hooked on until the last because I have an amazing fact waiting for you guys, don't leave midway. In 1864, in Germany, the would-be physicist Wilhelm Wien was born. In 1893, using the theories on heat and electromagnetism, he was able to derive a law that would predict the thermal emission of black bodies. The law was named Wien's displacement law. But before I get in with the law itself, let me tell you what black bodies are. Black bodies are hypothetical bodies, they don't really exist. But they are unique in the fact that they have a property which says they can emit and absorb thermal radiation at all frequencies possible. There is no such body, but there are bodies that are constructed to have properties especially close to this. For example, Ferris black body. Now, this displacement law states that if at a temperature T, maximum, most intense emission of thermal radiation occurs at a wavelength, say lambda max, then the product lambda max times the temperature is a constant, which means if you change the temperature, the lambda max changes but the product lambda max times t is always the same. So which naturally states if you increase the temperature, the wavelength at which the maximum emission occurs goes down. That's it about Wien's displacement law. In 1896, he also empirically came up with a relation that predicted the distribution of thermal radiation over the various frequencies. But it was only valid for high frequency radiation. If you consider frequencies very low, the results that the law would give and the experimental data do not match. So it was a partially correct theory. For these works in 1911 he was given the Nobel Prize. And, but that's not all. In 1898 he also came up with a device which is called Wien filter. This device consists of perpendicular electrical and magnetic fields which is used to filter charged particles of a particular velocity by which I mean if a charged particle is coming in in a beam charged particle with a certain velocity will be unaffected and will pass through the filter but the charged particles of any other velocity will be scattered so the beam is filtered to a particular velocity also in the same year in 1898 during his study of ionized gases he discovered a particle with the same mass as the hydrogen atom and a positive charge. In later on, J.J. Thompson refined his apparatus and did the same experiment. He also had that particle. Later, Rutherford did the same experiment. He also found a particle. And finally, this particle was found to be proton. So he was, in a way, discoverer of proton. Also, with this work, he laid the foundations of mass spectrometry. His invention, Wien filter, can be configured to be used in many different ways as a filter in mass spectrometer or monochromator, for an example. These are just different ways of using the same thing. You can use it on different particles and for different purposes. You could filter a beam to come in or you could reject a beam, for example. And the fact that I was telling you about is you have heard of Wien bridge, which is an electrical circuit which consists of four resistors and two capacitors. Yeah, it has the name of Wien bridge, but this Wien is not the inventor. That was invented by Max Wien, who was the cousin of this Wien, Wilhelm Wien. Keep loving physics. Have a nice day. That's it for today.